بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا 13th اینڈ دا 14th لیکچر اف کمپیوٹر پروگرامنگ فار سول انجینئرز ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ نومیریکل میتھڈز فار کیلکولس اینڈ ڈیفرنشیل ایکویشنز اف یو ریممبر فرام دی پریویس لیکچر آئی گیو یو ڈیرائیوڈ ایکویشنز لائک دی ڈیرائیوڈ ایکویشن اف ڈیفلیکشن اف سم تھنگ لائک دس اینڈ یو were asked to plot the elastic curve and then accordingly the shear force and bending moment diagram of uh, a particularly of a particular simply supported beam loaded with a specific type of load and with certain support conditions uh, through that we learned uh, some new commands and advanced programming techniques in today's lecture what we are going to do is we are going to uh, use this example of simply supported beam to learn symbol mathematics where we are actually using python to derive equations like the ones we were using in the previous lecture and with that we'll also learn how to do differentiation and integration in python for that we are going to use simpy library so i'll introduce you further with this example as we will continue today in python so let us run spider of course it's always nice to start by writing some description of your code but uh, just to get a feel of it i'll start with a blank sheet so if you're using spider your simpy is already installed and you're ready to import it but otherwise you have to pip install simpy if it is not installed and we already learned how to do that in the previous lecture where we installed celluloid library so the first thing to do is to import simpy and we can import it as its own name just like that or we can give it a name i'll be using s for that now in simpy we work with symbols so looking at our today's example we already have learned we're going to use Uh, in your mechanics of solid you have already learned a very useful technique for finding deflection in a beam called double integration method so what we are going to do today is we are going to use the double integration method in python to find the maximum deflection delta in this simply supported beam of length l and it is carrying a uniformly distributed load of intensity w not as shown here throughout the length now in double integration method we are familiar with we are already familiar with a very common second order differential equation that bending moment at any point on a beam is equal to the product of the flexure rigidity which is the product of young modulus and uh, moment of inertia with the second derivative of deflection with respect to distance x so this is d square y over dx square times ei is equal to the bending moment so in this particular case we have this distance as x and this deflection shown here at x as y so the second derivative of y with respect to x multiplied by the moment of inertia of this beam and the young modulus of the material used in it will be equal to the bending moment at this particular point now bending moment at this point can be written in the form of this equation which is half w not lx minus wx half of x let's quickly revisit this so the total load here is w not multiplied by length l and half of that will come as a reaction on one side and half on the other side so it is half of w not into l and the bending moment at the section x will be equal to this load multiplied by this distance and this distance is x so it will become half of w not l into x which is the first part of this equation now minus the other part is the bending moment due to the load on top now up till x the total load is w not w not multiplied by this x and then the distance of the moment arm for this load is half of x from here because the centroid of a rectangle is in the middle so it will become w not into x into x by 2 and because it is in the other direction so it is negative so w not x into x by 2 solving it further will give us this equation and if we integrate this equation two times we will get rid of the differential here because it is the second order differential equation and uh, with that we will get 
the equation of y and y is actually the deflection at any point x so in this equation if you put x and other constants which is w0 and l and ei we'll get the deflection y but after uh, double integration the first integration will give us a constant of integration c1 and the second integration will give us another constant c2 and we need to find c1 and c2 with the help of boundary conditions for this particular case the useful boundary condition is that at x is equal to 0 deflection is equal to 0 and the second boundary condition is at x is equal to l deflection is equal to 0 too we have several other boundary conditions for example another one here is that the so the first condition at x equal to 0 y equal to 0 will if we if we resolve the second equation here with that putting y equal to 0 here and x is equal to 0 in all these we will directly get c2 is equal to 0 and if we put that c2 in this equation and x is equal to l and y is equal to 0 for the second boundary condition we'll get the value of c1 which is equal to minus 121 over 24 w naught l cube so putting both c1 and c2 in the last equation we will get the equation of y this is our first target now to find out where we have the maximum bending moment we already know the point of maximum slope or minimum slope or zero slope actually is the point of inflection and or a maxima minima point and at that point we can find out the value of the maxima so if you differentiate this equation once by putting the value of c1 and c2 we will get something like this we already know now that c1 is equal to this term and equating that equal to 0 and solving for x we will find out the location of x where we have maximum value of deflection and once we know that maximum value of deflection we know the bending moment will be maximum there as well so we can find using that max to find out that maximum value of deflection we will put that x in this equation put the value of ei and l and w naught and we'll get what we call y maximum solving it further we know that y maximum is equal to minus 5 over 384 w0 l4 over ei which is shown here rewritten so this these are our target values and let's uh, we already have seen now how to do all that by hand so let us do all that with the help of python so let us imagine we had just this information that we have this simply supported beam with this type of loading and we only know this statement and what we need to do is use python to actually use symbol algebra to find out this equation and also to find out the general equation of deflection for this particular case and at any point x so let us start working on it and we now know that this part is the one where we should start from now all the symbols First of all, you, if you are working in Python SymPy, we need to list all those simple symbols that we are going to use. So we are going to use EI as a constant, L, W0, Y, X, and that's it. We can work with, with all that. And if we need any more symbols, we'll keep adding them in our program. So let's add symbols in our program. So first, just to give a gap to make it more readable, let us write all these symbols. So the first symbol, instead of writing E and I separately, because I know they both are constant and when they get multiplied, they give a constant answer. So I'm creating one symbol with the name EI. In mechanics, it's called flexural rigidity. With a comma, I'll, uh, instead of W0, I want to use in my code W as the second symbol which is the load on it comma the length I'll use capital L for that we remember that we needed X too and this covers the whole list of variables and constants that we need in this program now in order to create these 
symbols we have to say this all is equal to s the sympy library that we just created dot symbols and within parenthesis in single quotes or double quotes or in triple quotes if you're just writing a string we'll write the symbols we want to use for all these variables in python so python will use these symbols to write equations for us but in our program we will be representing those symbols with these names so ei i want once python will write an equation for us i would like it to write ei for it why because in hand calculation we like to see ei ei written in the formula next is w we we decided to write w not for that we can write w o or w0 for it and if you want it to be shown beautifully on the screen as a symbol uh, by python uh, you can make w underscore zero to represent w subscript zero just like the one written in this document so it is subscripted zero you can see zero or o is at subscript here the next i would like to use l as capital l and x in the equations just like x so always whenever we are using sympy the first thing is to list all the symbols just like this so now whenever we are going to write our program and want to calculate something with symbols we will not use these symbols but we will be using these variables and once python will start showing us equations in the form of symbols python will be using these symbols for that purpose so you might be noting that i forgot to write y here because y is not the symbol it is a symbol that represents the function so y is a function of all these things so just to give you an example and what we actually want to achieve in our program is we want to work on deflection and deflection represented with y so we can say y is a function of w naught l x and ei so this ei will come here in the denominator and it will become an equation of y so y is our function of all these things so let us define our function y in using sympy so the next thing is to define our function so let's because there's only one function we'll say y is equal to s dot function now function need to be capital and then within parentheses just like that in quotation marks as a string we'll write y so now we have defined all the symbols which will create an equation and that all equation will be equal to a function which is the uh, which is y and y is a function of all these things so this is how we have defined it but let us start writing a proper equation so because we already know actually what is our final answer which is this equation and this equation but then let's derive it without hand calculations as we did here but we using python only so we this is our starting point we already know now how to write this equation of movement so instead of, of using um, any other symbol i'll just simply use these symbols to write an equation and then i'll call it being equal to m first of all just to help us understand how to actually use it so here i will say m equals to so it is um, half of w naught lx minus half of w naught x squared. So half multiply half multiplied by w naught is actually represented by w. So w into x uh, into l into x minus half of w into well it's w not in the form of symbols but into x squared so once you have done that 
let's see what it gives so simply print m and see what what it prints for us so you can see that this time it has not asked the values that what is the value of w what is the value of l or the l is not assigned any value or constant it has just uh, given us the uh, equation as we have written it but it's not uh, looking pretty or beautiful as we commonly write in hand calculations when because now today our purpose is to do hand calculations in symbol in the form of symbols using Python actually so let's start showing it just like that too so in order to do that instead of print we use another special function of simpy which is called pretty print or p print so instead of writing print I will say simpy s dot uh, p print so it is pretty print m this time so let me run this again so now you can see the x is now in the power there and w underscore o is now w naught just like as we wanted now here if you are using uh, any other python interpreter you will see a different uh, d uh, this equation beautified in a different form but in spider when you run a code it is beautified or prettified just like this in other programs like Jupyter or um, just like in a normal console it will appear differently but here if you want to see the equation directly in the console so for example now we know that m is equal to this and here I write just show me m I'll just simply write capital M and enter or we can, I can write print as well I'll see a relatively more um, different uh, form of it uh, but then again because it is not it is just m printed but not prettified so if I say s dot uh, pretty print m here this is the same thing as written here in the code and I press enter for it um, so you will see that uh, this equation is appearing like this to make it more uh, beautiful you have to initialize uh, printing beautiful printing uh, on a speci specific format in simpy so before we start uh, using pprint or pretty print we first need to initialize all these printing tools for simpy so here before uh, writing all defining all symbols and everything the first thing we need to do is s dot initialize or init underscore printing you can see in help it is telling us all these details so you can just simply write them from here and then we can simply write them from here and then in it we can either keep it like this so let's keep it blank because everything is you can see that uh, by default it's uh, true pretty print is already true so if you want to make it false you can make it false as well you can use other formats like Unicode, Latex and so many other formats as well I will be using Unicode in a while but let's uh, see what difference does it make so if I run this now I'll see nothing much is done here but if I write s dot p print m here nothing again so if I now say for example use underscore Unicode equals to false and then run it nothing much and then s p print m nothing much so let me say it's equal to true and then run it let's s print m again so at the moment it's not doing much to it so let's uh, stick to it and then we'll see more different varieties of these results in a while so let's check something uh, beside what we were doing just for learning purpose and the check is that we already know that the bending moment is the second derivative of uh, deflection with respect to x times ei and we know that shear force is the derivative of bending moment so dm over dx is actually equal to shear force 
so just for the sake of check it is not required uh, in our today's example but if I say the shear V equals to s dot differentiate what within the parenthesis I will say differentiate M and then with comma I'll write the symbol about which we want to or with respect to which I want to differentiate it so I want to differentiate it with respect to X so this will now become dm over dx so instead of m now if I say write v print v on the screen so let me run this now so now what it's showing is half of uh, w naught into l minus w naught into x into 1 this is if you if you check and calculate the shear force you will notice that this shear force is uh, exactly equal to this and let me quickly show you that so shear force at a distance x is equal to half of w naught l minus this load which is w naught into x so double checking that it is half of w naught into l minus w naught x so perfect so this is now we have learned how to do differentiation in Python using SymPy library. Now let's move on and write this second order equation. So this equation is that this all bending moment is equal to the second derivative of deflection times EI. So instead of I'll just simply delete this. So the next thing is let's write that expression. So, in, uh, so and, and let me store that expression in a variable called expr1. This is our first expression we are going to write. And now, because we are going to write an equation in it, so which is the, the equation will be equal to the second derivative of y into ei is equal to this all bending moment equation. So, because we are writing equation, so we will say simpy dot capital EQ, which means equation we are, we are going to write an equation and within these parentheses we are going to write that equation and because y is a function and we want to differentiate it with respect to something so we'll say y x so this is the y is a function of x because we want to differentiate it with respect to x and we want to differentiate it twice so i'll say this function dot differentiate and then within parentheses i will write differentiate it once with x and if I want to differentiate it again, I'll say comma differentiate it another time. So if I want more dif more differentials of it, for example, four differentials, so I'll say again with x and then again with x. So this time it means d4y over dx4. So this is how to write in the equation form d4y over dx4. Uh, just for the sake of uh, understanding, let me s dot pretty print. this expression one so here we can see that it is actually d4y over dx4 and because it is we haven't written what it is equal to so it is just not writing anything but for us we need an equation that says that the second derivative of y times ei is equal to all this bending moment equation so we are saying second derivative so I'll delete these times EI is representing the symbol product of EI so I'm writing EI and it's all equal to what so if it is if you want to write it equal to 0 I can say minus M by or bringing the M on the other side of the equation uh, but then let me say that that is equal to m itself so i'll say comma m so now what it says is it says use simpy equation and the equation is what is equal to what this is the simple equation and we know that the product of ei with the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to m now let's run this expression once again so here it is the second ei times second derivative of y is equal to that particular equation of m 
So we are well on track here. Next, uh, we know that we need to integrate this once with respect to x to get this equation and then twice another time we'll integrate this one to get this equation and there it is we'll have the equation of y but unfortunately with some unknown constants so later on we'll solve these constants but let's integrate them first so if i write expression 2 equals to s dot integrate and here i'll write the function which is m i want to integrate the equation of bending moment with respect to x and then i want to print it so i'll say print expression 2 let's see what we get so it is w naught x square into l divided by 4 minus 0 0.0.166 w naught x cube which is 1 over 4 w naught lx square minus 1 sixth of w naught x cube which is same notice there is a constant of integration here but it hasn't given us that constant here let me integrate this result again and store it in expression number 3 for example s dot integrate now what this time you want to integrate expression 2 with respect to x once again and here i need to change expr to 3 and let's run it again so here it is and if i just write here expr 3 and press enter so we'll get it in a more better form and then if i say s dot p print expr 3 and then enter We'll see the similar form as here with the cube on the top. So here's W naught X cube and so we, it's now it's better in the form of an expression. But again, the constant of ex, uh, constant of integration are missing here. So this seems not a better way of uh, working forward. What SimPy library has for us is another method which can directly solve this equation for us this differential equation in expression 1 the second order differential equation so let me remark these two and instead of doing that I would say expression 2 equals to s dot differential solve or dissolve what we need to solve expression 1 simply and then let's print the result on the screen of expression 2 so let me run it now you can see it is now more beautified now instead of the numbers like point, uh, 0.0833 representing 1 over 12 we have properly something over 12 here and this equation is the final result of y so solving this expression for y which means double integration with constants you can see it already have constants c1 and c2 in it and the whole expression in this form too now if i write expr2 here and just press enter we'll see it in this form and if i say s dot simplify the same expression expr2 so it will just rearrange all these things but in a better form and then i press enter for it so you can see this parenthesis is gone and if i now say um, all this s dot pretty print simplified result so we can see now it is in in a resolved form now let us compare this with the solution we get 
by hand. So here we had uh, y equals to 1 over 12 and then let's take this ei on the other side of the equation as well w naught lx cube which is this term here and then 1 over 24 ei w naught x4 which is the last term here and it is negative just like this one and then we have c1x plus c2 here we have c1 plus c2x so because c1 c2 are constant they are just swapped here in in the form of symbols so we don't worry about it so we have directly solve the second dif uh, auto differential equation here using d solve in simpy to get to this solution with constant so it is a better way of doing it instead of integrating it twice as we just did a while ago next we want to put these boundary conditions which are uh, at x equal to 0, y is equal to 0, then find out what's the value of c0, sorry, c2 or c1. And similarly, for the other boundary condition that at x equal to l, y is equal to 0, let's find the other constant. So let's see how, it, how we can achieve that, uh, how to get the values of constant in uh, Python using SymPy library. So once we have the solution in expr2 variable, we can now solve two equations as we did by hand. But this time we'll do it uh, using SymPy. So what we're going to do is the this expression that is written here, uh, which we just got in the result as well. If you put x is equal to 0, and at y is equal to 0 or, or in other words y is equal to 0 at all x is equal to 0 this will be one equation and the second equation will be y is equal to 0 at x all of these substituted with L so at x is equal to L y is equal to 0 we'll get another equation and if you solve these two equations together we can find out c1 and c2 the values of c1 and c2 so let us do that so first of all we need to solve these two expressions together by first of all replacing at x equal to 0 y equals to 0 so what I'll say here is uh, first of all I'll say expression dot substitute sorry expression dot xp uh, 2 sorry expression 2 dot substitute so it will just write subs and within parenthesis now we can substitute variables in the form of uh, tuples or group of twos now how to do that is uh, in box bracket we will write the first what value of x will give us what value of y so we can write it like this that at x is equal to 0 so instead of writing x equals to 0 here we need to input it as within parenthesis x comma 0 now here what it means is that this expression expression 2 which we got here write this substitute all x with 0 and whatever we get let's display it so instead of printing this let me store it in for example um, expr3 equals to this expression after substitution and let me print exp3 here so before substituting x this was the equation but once we replace all these x or substitute all these x with 0 let's see what we get so notice all this x multiplied here and here will vanish and uh, we'll all will will uh, destroy all these three terms and we'll will we'll be left with c1 and because this x is also replaced or substituted with zero so we have this but this is not the final solution because we actually need we uh, the whole uh, boundary condition is that at x is equal to zero 
why not is equal to 0 or why is equal to 0 actually so here we need to write the second boundary condition as well with a comma and the second boundary condition again will go within these brackets and because y is a function we have to define the position of that function by writing y and within uh, parenthesis the value of x that y0 is equual to well, instead of equal of course we, we are writing tuples a group of two in commas are called tuples is also equal to zero now this is a set of boundary conditions which is which means at x is equal to zero y not is equal to zero so here we know it is x so why i have written this term here because once we put x is equal to zero y x actually converts into y not and we know that this is also equal to 0. So here I am writing this particular term, not y x, but y 0 is equal to 0. Let's run it again and see the result. So here it is. We have our first boundary condition, c1 equals to 0. We have the first constant calculated, c1 is equal to 0. Now uh, we also need to find the expression for the second boundary condition that what happens to this equation once we put x is equal to l that at x is equal to l y l is equal to zero so that will be expression four let me write expr four equals to in the expression two substitute these boundary conditions the first one is at x is equal to l now all these x and l and y should be already defined as symbols here and y as a function here otherwise you will not be able to see these expressions like this and python will keep giving you error that the value of l is not defined the value of x is not defined y is not defined but it is not giving us an error because it understands that these are actually symbol and we are going to solve them symbolically the second boundary condition element is that after comma we'll write that at y l within parenthesis y l is also equal to zero. So here we are using the y expression two is same as this one, and here we are saying it that at x is equal to l, replacing all these x in it with l, y l will get here as y l. And then y l is also equal to zero. This was the second boundary condition. The y's are deflection, so at at both support conditions at a distance zero and a distance l we have supports, and at supports we have no deflection, so y's are zero at that location. So let's also print expression four for us. So now here we have uh, this equation, but then in this case we have c. 2 and c1 both as unknowns in it now we already know c1 is equal to 0 so if we substitute c1 in this equation we may solve it for c2 so let's solve both of these equations together so if you notice if you solve this and this equation together this will actually tell that c1 is equal to 0 and then if we try to find out the value of c2 we rearrange this we'll get the value of the constant c2 we can do it by hand but let's do it with python so in order to do that we'll let's store these constants c1 and c2 in a variable called for example constants <coughs> so constants are equal to what so we're going to use simpy to solve these two equations simultaneously so i'll say s dot solve what two equations simultaneously the first one is expr3 and the second one is expr4 but then again we need to tell them in the form of a list a list of all those expressions that we need to solve and whenever we solve two or three or four equations, we'll keep 
writing them in the form of a list here so whatever 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 we're going to write all of them but currently we need to solve only these two expressions together which are actually this equation and this equation and once we solve them we need to resolve them for certain variables for now we actually want c1 and c2 to be calculated from it so with the comma here we need to tell what actually we want to extract out from it so here i can write what i need is within a, a list of variables so i need the symbol c1 and c2 but then notice it is giving us an error because it's saying that all these expressions and x and l are symbols but c1 and c2 are not symbols we haven't defined it they are internally defined by simpy itself here as c1 and c2 uh, but then we and how we came to know once we printed this equation expression 4 and expression 3 and 2 we realized there are c1 and c2 in it but we haven't defined them here so let's define them here as well so here i'll say c1 comma c2 and then if you want you can write c1 and c2 here and if you want them to be in un, uh, in the subscript you can write underscores here as well so they will look beautiful c with um, subscript 1 and subscript 2 now because they are defined symbols c1 and c2 we can now resolve them with for symbols here as well so let's see the, these constants by printing them on the screen now it is uh, giving us a blank list as an answer because uh, we have defined a score 1 and underscore 2 just to represent that uh, c1 and c2 constants but python itself was actually using those c1 and c2 not without with a sub, uh, subscript so let me remove these underscores from again so here it is we get a list of answers in this uh, list actually this is presenting things that c1 colon 0 means c1 is equal to 0 and c2 colon this means the value of c2 in instead of equal sign with colon and with the comma and with in these uh, storing data is called dictionary and uh, just like in a dictionary we have uh, words which mean something so now this is a dictionary which is not saying this is equal to this but it's saying c1 means 0 and c2 means this so uh, we are going to use this dictionary c1 and c2 in our actual equation um, and then let's uh, and see the final result so let both of them together for expression that one uh, better pr printed soon after we created it here solving got so let's print expression number two and then constants so let's print them as well in the list so let's see the whole result together like the so this differential equation we saw we have this but it had constants so what we did was we so, uh, we simultaneously all the substituted uh, boundary conditions first boundary condition second boundary condition here in uh, expression 2 and and then we printed result this with the result uh, in our hand calculations 0 and the other constant is minus uh, w naught l over 24 ei so over 24 w naught l q i missed it and then the other constant is so we are doing fine so constant here so uh, we, we have printed them here First constant is C1 and the second is C2. This is a dictionary form of representing constants. If instead of writing equals here and we instead of writing in them in a box bracket like list, we write them in brackets. So just like in a dictionary, we have, uh, words representing their meaning on the other side. So here we, it's, it's saying C1 means 0 and C2 means this term. 
it's not like c1 is equal to this and c2 is equal to this but what it means so if you want in python to something to mean something we instead of making them equal we write them in the form of a dictionary here so let's use this dictionary which is to replace or substitute the deflections substitute the constant in the equation of deflections here c and c2 in order to me store the final result in uh, another expression and let me this time call it the expression of uh, delta at any point x so i'll write capital d x is equal to expression 2 which is our this expression but then the substitute what we want to substitute in it we want to substitute C1 and C2 as mentioned in this dictionary with it. So I'll just simply write constants. And next line, let me print it on the screen just to see the results. Pretty print. DX as well. So see what it gives. So here it is. Now all C1 and C2 are replaced. Let me show it in more simple form. S dot simplify what this dx so first of all it will simplify dx and then it will show it on the screen so currently you can see that x is not multiplied inside and all w naught and l can, uh, sorry w naught and x can be taken common and this or the denominator can be taken common so many things can be done uh, to show this in a more simplified form so now we'll first simplify it and then we'll print it on the screen so let's see the difference so here it is we can see now it is now very clean and let's compare it with the uh, equation we derived by hand so y at any x is equal to this ei taking on the other side in the denominator equals to 1 over ei which is 1 over ei, EI here taking w naught x and 24 common from it will get minus w naught x over 24 common taken out from it we have 2lx square and x cube here so we have x cube coming from here l cube coming from here and minus 2lx coming from uh, 2lx square coming from perfection now in the next step what we are going to do is we are going to find out the uh, location of maximum deflection uh, it's obvious here that maximum deflection is right in the middle no in this calculation we know that x is equal to at x is equal to l by 2 will have maximum deflection so replacing all these x in this equation with l by 2 get in y will be maximum y so that is why here is y to all this equation where x is replaced with l by 2 and then uh, solving it further will get maximum deflection equal to 5 or 384 ei denomin in go going here in the denominator 4 this will be our final answer but let's say we don't know that where the maximum deflection is and we know this of this elastic curve so y is the or this equation is the deflection at any point x so if we differentiate it once we'll get the slope of this maximum slope. and as we come to the maximum deflection the slope drops to zero it becomes perfectly horizontal and then started to increase again this means wherever the slope or dy over this is to zero at that particular x we have the maximum deflection so that x should be l by 2 for us but let's find it out using python differential of dx in a variable called diff dx we can name it anything we want and that is equal to nothing more than dx dot first different with respect to x now notice that dx is not just a 
set of terms of equation but it is an equal it has right hand side here and it has left hand side here so for example here if i write dx we'll see that this is the equation and if i say dx dot left hand side we'll see left hand side and similarly if we get the uh, if you write right hand side and press enter we'll get the right hand side now we need to differentiate the left hand side and then equate but we actually want to uh, differentiate right hand side only which is this equated to zero by substituting or simply uh, solving this equation equal to zero for x so instead of writing d differentiate only say dx dot right hand side only and then differentiate it with respect to x let's see what we get with it d i uh, let's um, s or simpy dot pretty print differential of x we just calculated of dx calculated. so here it is and let's solve it for x so all this equal to 0 and solving it for x let's do that here so we'll simply say let me do it after this here let's dot solve solve what differential dx equation which we just get this if you don't write anything with it it is understood by the solve function that all of this is equal to zero so just like this here once we wrote this expression and this expression it was considered to be so once it is solved we need to write a comma and tell that for which variable we need to x, which is already a defined symbol here like this now so we just want it to be not stored anywhere we just want it to be printed on the screen so i'll say simpy dot pretty print the solution of all this and then after that uh, just let me cut it from here and paste it in the next line we see a stepwise solution so here it is this was the equation and once we solved it for x it three roots so that is why we got three answers one is l by 2 other is l by 2 plus 3 root l by 2 and other is 3 root l by 2 plus l by 2 so among the three we know the most first one manually this time we can write a program or we can write a statement to actually pick the first term from here and then print it for example is the zeroth item so if i write in box bracket the zeroth in this list print it on the screen so that will be simply l by to the first term so term out of it so the second term here but then if you really are interested in the only you can write zero here but then let me just show all of them why not just store it in max equals to this term but then the zeroth item in this which is this zeroth first let me just quickly print x max here so it is l by 2 and if you just it will just write it in a beautiful l by 2 form just like an equation x max has this l by 2 in it so let's substitute the in the deflection in sorry in the general deflection equation dx let's substitute x with m max and see what we get at the end deflection maximum 
and now that is equal to the uh, deflection at any point x but then substitute substitute x with x max we know x max is equal to l by 2 and a is point so in the equation of def uh, deflection which is this one wherever here and here it will get replaced with l by 2 and then once it is simplified we'll see the equation of deflection so let's uh, after this deflection uh, substitution let's sim uh, simpy pretty print d max for us so at y is equal to l by 2 we have the maximum deflection is equal to minus 5 naught over 384 ei let's compare that with our results here we just we have minus 5 over 384 w naught l4 over this EI in the denominator here, which is the right equation that we got. At so this was uh, all the manual calculation that we did by hand here. We can do all that using SimPy in Python. We have done that. Let's do some fun with it by and drawing deflected shape of this beam from x so that matplotlib library can be used so let me import matplotlib first of all all of the library but currently we just need pyplot from it there are so many other sub libraries in it and i want to load it as plt for example we give it a for readability purpose and after uh, printing this on the screen um, let me the plot statements which is plt uh, first of all of course we need to um, we can define define the if you have multiple plots to add subplots in it but because today we are just drawing only one plot so we can directly say plt dot plot now at x-axis we need x to be plotted and on y we need the equation dx to be used and then uh, we do add a label on the y-axis for, for deflection for example so we'll say plt dot uh, and quotation we can write deflection we know that all these values are in meters so let me write just for fun of it write a unit meters here to be clearer and we show the graph but then, uh, then EX are symbols, and Matplotlib library cannot work with symbols. It needs in like if you remember, we used a range uh, of numbers by them with uh, uh, lin linear space in NumPy. Um, so let's do that first of all. So instead of x, let me, for example, say x val, and let's use numpy to create x val. So first of all, I'll go on the top again. I'll as np, and then I will say here uh, x val values are equal to np or numpy or linear space. Let me create a space of uh, uh, from 0 to 10 meters for example the number of uh, elements 
of 100 elements so i'll divide this space of 1 to 10 meters into 100 elements so now the plot will take that x not the symbol x because matplotlib library doesn't work with symbols and we need to put all these x values this then this equation need that replacement of all these x in it so for we have a method in sympy to convert the sympy expression for example that expression one into a numpy equation so if you remember if we write an equation here for example x val squared so this is an equation which is based on x val it can now draw this curve easily let me run it and see the results so click on that so this is x into x square graph so here we need an expression where we have not x in it but actually all this x replaced with x wells in it and then the expression will be not just x square but the, it will be w and all things with w not replaced with a constant because the graph needs to, some numbers to be calculated not variables as w naught or l and ei and so on so let's substitute all these e i l constants in dx and then after that let's convert that in in format that can be used here instead so first of all let's substitute everything in d max and store it in another uh, uh, d max 2 for example d max 2 is equal to well we are actually not working with dmax we want uh, we don't need the equation we need the one with x so that we can use this expression to plot the graph so instead of dmax we are using dx so i'll just call it dx2 um, equals to dx what first of all we need to substitute ei which is already symbol wherever we have ei we need it to be replaced by comma so because let's assume it is steel so it's young modulus in newton per meter square giga pascal so let me say e which means to power and then nine so it becomes giga and then multiply it with let's say we have a cross of, uh, with the uh, uh, two inches roughly by width of two inches as well so two inches are in meters is 0 0.05 meters so bh cube over 12 will become 0 0.05 uh, to the power cube but then it is times uh, b as well which is same as well so instead of cube it will be four divided by 12 so this is the product of ei so we will now first of all replace uh, this substitution substitute ei with one equation of with one ex, uh, substitution we can actually replace many other values as well so in order to do that we have to provide a list here so list is provided uh, by market and then in the first tuple we'll write tuple means in a comma first what replace with what and then with a comma and then box bracket close for this and write the second tuple here second replacement and with a comma we can write another tuple here for the third replacement and we can carry on like this so if you remember we can write them in a separate line as well this is allowed uh, without any so here the second replacement we need uh, just to make um, uh, is uh, actually length let's give it a length of 10 meters and let me also write this in the next line as well and we also need to replace w which is used as a symbol of uh, w underscore not or w not so we actually in in our 
code it is used as w so let's replace w with a load of let's say newtons per meter of 4 newtons per meter for example so let's also print uh, dx2 so s dot pretty print dx2 so all print everything for us that we did and then now if you notice here it has uh, uh, written the same expression but with constants ei w naught and l replaced with um, with x only so we keep replacing this x with x val as we have created a linear space for it and we can write that expression here and we can carry on with it but then let's say that expression is stored in y val and let's store that in y val so, we have to first uh, create or convert this expression into numpy expression uh, numpy can not work with symbols so in simpy how to convert a simpy expression into numpy equation for printing it what i will do is i'll create a uh, i'll use uh, simpy lambda lambda phi function for that so lambda phi has the ability to convert the simpy form of equations any other library format so for example now uh, what we need is that in this x equation wherever we find x the dx2's right hand side so we don't want this in the equation we just need this part here so in dx2 in right hand side whatever wherever we end, convert that into a form as by numpy so here in the comma we need to write for what module so module is none we'll say no module is equal to and in the list of modules we can now write numpy we can provide multiple modules in it but then currently we are providing only one so here it is now what this will do is this will convert the sim simpy form of dx2 into numpy form so instead of just this in in beautiful form uh, as we see here as we do in hand uh, we'll convert it into a symbol form but just like this as we commonly use in numpy in this form so we can use it in this location here as well so let me store this result into a variable called x equals to all this and uh, if i try to print it you will see it cannot print it but it will tell it has been converted into a function let me print lam lambda x so it is uh, just saying that uh, a module is uh, written wrongly because it is actually not module it is let me double check that too so here it is if you see it is in plural here on the top you can see it is in so let me run it so it is it's saying that uh, uh, we haven't we used by val here but we haven't um, shown it so let me um, we haven't used it for storing anything in it so for now let me just replace it back back with x well so we'll get us run it again so here it is it is telling us that it has been con now converted into a function as we know in we use in python def uh, is converted this expression into a function but it has not it is not writing a function here it is 
cell where in the computer RAM memory it is stored but we are not interested in that at the moment so let's uh, leave it for now let's use that function lambda x to create y val so instead of printing it on the screen now here I will say um, I'll delete it and after creating a linear x I'll say y val equals to what it is equal to the same ik, 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 um, function all this and but then filling it with x wells x values so wherever we'll get we'll have we have x in it not in this but it's converted function uh, pi so we have converted uh, dx2's right hand side into a pi function and now that function is called lambda x and then in lambda x now if we replace all the with x values which are all the numbers from 0 to 100 uh, 0 to 10 um, all these numbers once they are placed in it calculate new y's for us and they will be stored now in y val so now we can replace this with y val and now it will show us the final graph here let me clear all the graphs on the screen and see the final result excellent so this is the deflected shape and uh, this is the uh, maximum deflection of around um, of constants so if you change these constants of course uh, the deflection will increase and decrease so you can make the beam weaker by uh, changing young modulus you can reduce the uh, you can make it more weak by changing its dimension um, and you can make it more weaker by increasing its length and you can make it uh, weaker more by increasing the load on it so this is uh, the conclusion of this uh, lecture we learned how to use simpy to actually work accurately with python so if you do all hand calculations as we do in um, on paper there is a possibility of having errors in it and every state uh, every calculation may take so much time for us but now uh, using simpy we can do it very skipping between and we have seen that it can do integration and differentiation for us and not only in the form of constants only but also in the form of symbols as you have seen in today's lab act, uh, activity you have to repeat the same thing uh, but then or this particular beam so it is actually everything same same thing everything same except the load is no more rectangular but it is now triangular for that the equation of movement and uh, um, is uh, given here with this is the equation so instead of this equation this one we start with this you will actually start with this equation note that here at the, the w shown here is the total load which is actually equal to w naught l uh, w naught is the, the, this value here into l by 2 just if you replace this uh, capital w with w naught l by 2 you will um, you will get the expression that you actually need to use uh, for this uh, exercise and here they have shown just the bending moment and shear force diagram uh, we are currently not interested in that we are interested in deriving this equation so your result should be this with capital w replaced with w naught l by 2 and that will be the final output of your lab i hope you will enjoy this best of luck assalamu alaikum